I, I was working on these tablet computers, and then I got this other second bug. It's, you know, I got the neuroscience thing going. And the second one was I realized that in the future that everyone's going to have a, a, a personal computer that fits in their pocket, that that would be the primary computing device for everybody, that you would be accessing a pocket-based computer more often than you'd be accessing anything else, and that this was inevitable, it was going to happen, but I could make it happen sooner, we could do a good job at it, and I got really excited about doing this. And so now I had these two passions. Like I wanted to do the mobile computing thing. And we'd say the future of personal computing was mobile computing. And then I had the neuroscience thing. And I had to decide what to do. So I said to myself, all right, I'll just go do the mobile computing thing for another four years. And I put the neuro- I'm still young. I put the neuroscience thing off for a little bit longer. Um, and this is where I ended up starting my first company. Now, uh, I'm, I'm what you would call a reluctant entrepreneur. I have started four, in, four corporations. Uh, one was a nonprofit. I'm going to tell you about that, too. So Tina mentioned three. But I started four. And each time, I was reluctant to do it. Each time, I really didn't want to do it. Um, and I'll tell you, I'm not being honest about it. Uh, you'll see why. But um, so what happened was I started talking at industry conferences about the future of personal computing being mobile computing and how you can design these small things and what it's going to be like. And you've got to imagine it was pretty hard back then because at that time, there was no technology to do this. There was no good battery technology. There was no low-powered uh, CPUs. There was no good small displays. There was not even good packaging technology. No one was doing anything with wireless. The internet didn't exist as a consumer phenomenon, and nobody had cell phones. To say that we're going to build these you know, mobile computers, that we're going to be doing all these things, we didn't know what they were going to do yet, because people weren't listening to music or watching movies on their computers at that time. Uh, it sounded kind of crazy, but I thought, whatever's going to happen, it's going to happen. So anyway, I was approached by a couple of VCs, and they said, we'd like you to start a company. And you think, wow, wouldn't that be great? I said, oh, I don't want to do that. And the reason was because I saw a lot of other people start companies. You know what happened? They work like dogs. They got divorced. They sold their house. You know, this looked like a miserable lifestyle. And I'm not into that kind of lifestyle, you know. I don't work weekends. And I don't work long hours. And I'm like, you know, I don't want to do that. So they said, well, we'll, we'll help you. I said, okay, I'll only do it if you really help me. I'm going to promise, you know, here's what you're going to do and blah, blah, blah. I said, I'm going to hire someone to run the company, but I don't want to do it right away. They didn't believe me, by the way. They thought, that I, they thought my VCs thought that I really did want to run the company and that I was just kind of going to wait, trying to convince them, but I really didn't want to run the company. And, but I said, all right, but it's worth it because it's such a cool idea that we're going to build these mobile computing devices, and, uh, and that was going to be great. That's how Palm got started in uh, January of 1992. Um, and now, like, like a lot of startup companies, Palm had its problems. It almost went out of business. Its first products were a complete failure. We, we partnered with Casio and Tandy and some other companies, America Online and so on. It was a total mess. Um, and uh, we had this product called the Zoomer, which came out at the same time as the Apple Newton. So we were the second fiddle to the worst product ever. In, you know, <laughs> so, so it was really bad. You know, Casio versus Apple. And Apple fails, Casio's not going to do anything. So, um, so that's our situation. But you know what? We had $3 million in the bank. We had 27 employees. Our investors, all except for one, all investors said, this is a failure. We're getting out of this. But we had $3 million left. We couldn't raise any more money. So we said, OK, what are we going to do? And we said, let's keep going off. We're passionate about mobile computing. Let's do it. Let's try to figure it out. So we went back, and we, we interviewed all our customers who bought the Newton and bought the Zoomer and so on. We said, what did you want this thing to do? And they, and they said, well, I wanted it to be a paper like my organizer, but can, you know, synchronized with my assistant and so on. So we listened to these people, and we said, OK, we're up against paper. We're not up against computers. We're going to make an electronic organizer. That's a hands-on computer. And that was the, what became the Palm Pilot. We developed the product at $3 million. We could not, didn't have enough money to bring it to market. There's no way in the world that anyone would fund us, even though we were on the verge of having one of the most successful consumer products of all time. So we actually sold the company for $44 million, which some people thought was like, miraculous. How did you get that amount of money for a failed company? Other people in high saying, said, oh my god, you gave the company away. But anyway, we sold it to uh, US Robotics. And, but all, the entire team stayed on, because we were still passionate about this, this mission of mobile computing. So there we were. The company went through a series of acquisitions. It was now being owned by uh, 3Com. 3Com was mismanaging it. Now, guess now, one thing I should tell you, when I started Palm, it was in my employment contract that after four years, I could go do neuroscience. <laughs> it's there. I have this book at home. You know, when, you, when, you, when you do a founding of a company, they give you these books, that, 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 all that you'll see if you ever found a company, a book with all the documents in it. Mine says, I can work on neuroscience. Um, so four years, we were into it. The Palm, Palm was being very successful. I was now working part-time at 3Com slash Palm, doing my neuroscience. And then we were having these sort of management difficulties with the, the senior managers at 3Com. And one day, my business partner, oh, I forgot to mention, I did hire the CEO. Her name was Donna Davinsky. 
And, um, and I hired her six months after we started Palm. And so I, I've been working with her for many years. Anyway, so one day Donna walks in my office and says, Jeff, we just resigned. I said, what do you mean we just resigned? She says, we just resigned. She says, the, the two of us? Says, yes. So now I was really mad at her for resigning for me. Um, <laughs> but, but you might not realize why. It took me a while to realize it. Because the reason we, she, we resigned, or she resigned, the reason I was mad is because we basically felt that Palm was going to fail under 3 com. It was going to be driven out into non-existence, and then we didn't want that to happen. So we were trying to argue that they spin the company out. They argued, we'll never spin the company out. This is Eric Benamo. I will never spin this company out of, of, of 3Com. And we said, well, you're going to kill it then. Therefore, we have to leave. And uh, we'll have to start a new company. So we basically resigned to start a new company, which was Handspring. Well, guess what? When you start a new company, you can't work part-time anymore. So my neuroscience dreams were like fading away from me. Well, the moment Donna walked in my office and said, you just resigned, I'm like, what do you mean? No. Um, <laughs> So I said, oh my God, we have to do another four years, right? So, okay, I'll do it. For, you know, actually, we agreed that I would work for full time for two years, and then I'd be able to start working part time again. 